MMA Ozbaker. Today we're talking to Mike Bronzoulis, the Greek. Holy crap, you got skinny. I mean, you got really skinny. Uh, yeah. This is your first fight down at 55, and it shows. Like, you're doing... What are, what are you walking around at right now? Uh, right now, you know, we're real close to the fights, a week away. Um, about 170. You know, I've never cut down this light. I started at 195 about a month ago. So, uh, you know, I've already got like 25 pounds off just from dieting. And, uh, you know, I totally uh, switched up my training regimen, doing a lot more than I've ever done, working my ass off harder than I've ever worked. And I'm in the best shape of my life. I've never dieted before uh, the way I've been doing it now. And I've never really taken it this serious as far as training. I'm doing everything I should have done in the beginning when I first started fighting. But I guess it took me getting my ass kicked in my last fight and, uh, you know, fighting a larger guy to, to, to really realize what I need to do. And uh, I've been told for some time by some of the top lightweights, Cowboy, Melvin Glard, you know, they told me, Mike, you get a 155. So, you know, I'm doing it, you know. You know, it's it's funny. You're you're just about six foot, right? Yeah. And yes. in my day, you know, at 5'10", you know, I, I was a I was a 170 pounder and everybody's like, hey, you, you may be 55, but you're so thick you shouldn't do it. But now, like if I were to start my, my fighting career right now, I'd have no choice but to be at 155 pounds because the height... You have such a disadvantage in reach and length. When these guys are 6'2", 6'3", at 170 yep. pounds, you can't catch them. Yeah. You the, last, the, last, the last guy I fought, you know, uh, we, we did a Skype interview before that, uh, yep. Keith Johnson. I think he was 6'2", 6'3", and I think he weighed back in at like close to 200 pounds that night. I was only 185 pounds. I mean, that guy was a giant, you know. I mean, he, he no no uh, no discrediting to anything else. I mean, he, he was an awesome fighter, and he was prepared. I just – when, it, hey, when you got two guys that are evenly matched, man, the height and the weight does make a difference sometimes. All things being equal, if everything is equal, experience, striking power, grappling power, ability on the ground, ability on your feet, if everything else is equal, then take size and weight into a factor, that bigger guy is always going to win. So if you're equally matched with somebody and then you're you're bigger than them, your, your chances of, of winning are severely increased. We saw that Brock Lesnar. He was bigger than everybody and he was evenly matched. We became unevenly matched with guys like Kane and Jade. And he got and he started getting beat up by Frank Mary. He didn't know about submissions. Then all of a sudden you saw the inequality of it. But then you started realizing that a lot of these guys, even the heavyweights, weren't coming in at 300 pounds anymore. 250, right. 255. Even the heavyweights realized it's better to be more agile and smaller. Do you feel more agile at this weight class? You feel, I mean, you are smaller, but do you feel a little bit more able to move at this size? Uh, believe it or not, you know, uh, you can see the difference in my face, but uh, as far as muscle wise, man, I've just gotten more toned and ripped. I haven't lost any muscle really. In fact, I've creased a little bit. Uh, I feel very fast, very agile. My cardio is better than ever. And, you know, I'm willing to bet that they're underestimating me. Uh, this guy's camp, you know, thinking that I probably cut a, a lot of weight and, you know, I'm going to have cardio problems and stuff. That's the exact opposite. You know, I'm. I can't wait to see how I perform. I'm excited. I've never been this excited before in my life. There, you know, you're talking about you're about 15 pounds of weight right now at 170. Um, first time cutting down. Have you done a test cut previous to this to kind of see how close you can get? Yeah, I have. You know, uh, I've gotten to the low 60s, you know, without even trying hard. I mean, after one of my practices, I was 65, and that's nine pounds out. They're going to give me a pound. That shouldn't be a problem at all. Right. I, I feel really good. I haven't started cutting down as far as my portions or anything, and I'm still drinking a lot. So uh, fluids, you know, electrolytes, water, and stuff. And uh, yeah, I feel really good. I mean, this is this is amazing. I can't believe it's actually been this easy for me. What are your sponsors saying about it right now? Because you know, a lot of times sponsors are like, oh well, you know, we liked you up at this weight class and you fought better. Let's, you know, are your sponsors saying anything about you dropping that weight? Uh, no, uh, you know, there was a lot of concerns originally because I've never fought this weight class, uh, sponsors, of course, you know, the promoter, Mick Maynard, you know, I'm a big, I was a bigger guy. I was 195. Um, but I did pick up some new sponsors and they helped me along with the weight cut. One of them was refuel smoothies, uh, in Webster, Texas, uh, refuel smoothies and, and supplements. And, you know, they've been helping me with my diet and, you know, supplements and stuff. So it's been rather easy. And that's a big that's a big relief when they they're sending you supplements and they're sending you recovery drinks and because that's half that's half the training camp expense is the recovery drink and, and your supplements. 
So, and we all know that, that we've talked about this before. Fighters don't make that much money. We're not all millionaires. Most of us aren't. The top 5%, 3% might be making all the money. The rest of us are kind of struggling just to pay the bills and doing something we love. That's just kind of how it is right now. Uh, has it been a big, you know, as your sponsor helping out with your supplements, has that been a big, a huge help in this camp to, and, and really taking the weight off your mind about making weight because you have all this extra stuff in front of you? Oh, every bit helps. I mean, as you as you already said, we don't make a whole lot of money. I mean, it's embarrassing to even admit how much money we're making sometimes. Yeah. I'm, although I'm very grateful to be making what I'm making. I love what I'm doing. But uh, it, it really, I get by each month uh, by sponsorships, by people believing in me. And, uh, you know, definitely not the fight money. You know, I, you know, I haven't been doing that well lately in my fighting, but uh, the sponsors really believe in me. So they've been taking care of me as far as food, money, supplements, clothes, gear. And, you know, um, fighting on TV doesn't hurt, you know, so yeah, right. everybody likes their name on TV. So they get behind you and stuff. And, you know, if you're a likable person, which I seem to, you know, have a good rapport with people and people like are drawn to me you know sponsorships have never been a problem i get a ton of sponsorships not just on my own from networking passing cards out and uh just being easy to talk to you i guess you know so you're the co-main event on the Fantasy 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 Fantasy. 37 november 14th of course if you're not in the houston texas area you can definitely go see it on access tv uh any extra stress any extra pressure any extra media for being the co-main event in this fight uh, no, nothing that I haven't dealt with before. Um, there's no extra stress. Usually I'm stressed out because I don't think I've trained in certain areas hard enough. That's not the case this time. I've done everything I've had to do to be in the best shape to, you know, uh, train in each art. I've actually been doing gi jiu-jitsu now at Healy and Gracie's. I've never done gi jiu-jitsu. Everyone that knows me knows I've gotten this far in the game with no gi jiu-jitsu, no jiu-jitsu at all, and you, you know that. Yeah. Uh, just some, a little bit of wrestling defense and submission defense and mostly stand-up and just being a tough guy with heart. Uh, so now I'm training with uh, Professor Ramulo and Jackson and Drew over at uh, Healing Gracie's doing gi jiu-jitsu as much as I can at least every day, and it's over by the Galleria. Yeah, wow. so I'm, good for you. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's Mike, the Greek one. Zulus getting ready to fight uh, Justin Reiser. Come up here on Legacy Fighting Championships 37. Mike, always great to catch up with you. A pleasure. Thanks for coming back on. And I'm, I'm glad, man. You look good at 55. And, and uh, hopefully this is a new start. You know, get you back Thank on the winning track. I appreciate it, Frank. I, I believe so, man. I believe this is my opportunity. And, uh, you know, Justin's going to be ready to bring it. I know he's a tough guy. And uh, I appreciate him taking the fight. I appreciate McManor giving me the opportunity with Legacy Fighting Championships to take this fight. And, uh, you know, everyone believing in me, you know, if I can get a chance to thank my sponsors and people, yeah. I'd appreciate Yeah, go ahead. Plug them up. I got a new sponsor, Refuel Smoothies and Supplements in Webster, Texas. Josh and uh, RES is ready every second. Amy Gonzalez with Grappling Games here in Houston. Shamrock's Pub in Humble, Texas. Uh, Jeff Mencina's Revolution Dojo, uh, along with Nathaniel and Samuel Mongo Mongonia. They're, they're my Thai boxing coaches. Oh. Uh, train with them twice a day, one brother in the morning, one brother in the afternoon. They're just killing me on the pads. Uh, again, Healy and Gracie over by the Galleria, Professor Ramulo, Jackson, and Drew. Uh, State Farm Insurance with Wilbert Samuel. Aqua Hand Car Wash and Detail, Kevin Carmath. Metro Fight Club and all the fighters there. And Tiffany Gum with TM Productions. Thanks, Beautiful. Mom. You got it, Mike. We'll talk to you soon, bud. Thanks so much. Thanks, Frank. Good seeing you.